Yes, it's, it's spot on, James. So moving swiftly on, I'm delighted to, to welcome James, who um, knows an awful lot about gas and LPG. Uh, and I'm sure you'll explain why you know so much about the subject. Um, also worth just referencing that James has recently joined the BSI committee as the IMS representative. So congratulations and thank you for taking on that role, James. So I'll leave you to introduce yourself and without further ado, and off you go. Yeah, James Hale, work out of the west coast of Scotland now. Um, originally did a little bit of stuff down in the workshop area, had a little boatyard, that kind of thing. Um, gas safe from a previous life, so I've done extensive gas from Corgi right through to gas safe, and now I just concentrate on. I still retain my gas safe qualifications for consultancy, and uh, I no longer carry out any gas work of any of any kind, even if uh, I'm pressured. And obviously, the previous slides uh, a testament to that as well. Um, because gas safe guys can be a little bit in short supply. So the way that I want to work this, if we can, is uh, does everybody know how to open up their chat box? Mine's gone, mine's gone missing. I, th I think most people do. We've had plenty of chat questions coming in. Uh, if not, it's on my screen, it's at the bottom. And you just click on chat and uh, type, type in. So. Yeah, mine's gone for some reason. So can everybody um, just type in kind of yes? As we want to do a little bit of feedback as we go along with this, if we can. Okay, yeah, lots of yeses coming in. Yeah, cool. I, I can't see the chat at the moment, so uh, that's it's probably fine. Just PowerPoint yep. over the top. But so if Mike, if you could relay some. I'll, okay, I'll so can everybody see the 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 two gas bottles that are there, and they've been behind on my screen for some time now. So a quick yes for that would be good. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start with following on from what Mike said and also what Fraser Noble said at the um, at the coding sort of meeting, if you like. Um, we, we, we're just trying to find something to do with competency. So this is this is essentially what you've found on a boat that you're going to survey. It can be any kind of survey, uh, insurance, pre-purchase, whatever. It makes no difference really. Um, and then we're going to go through, <clears throat> obviously the competency side of it, which is, uh, which, 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 which was interesting for me because competency can come from several areas. So I, I kind of had a quick search through to find out where we were with that. So um, I'm going to move on to my next slide. This is the first time I've done this guy. So if it cocks up, it could be just, okay. So just let me move. You're doing just fine, James. Move that out of the way. Okay. So this is the gas installation and use. Uh, regulations 1998 and this is where gas safe guys and also people who do gas work whether that be private your sister your brother your for your for your family whether that's paid for or not uh, this is what they uh, the regulations are so it's a statutory instrument if you like and this is the fifth edition and I, I looked in there to try and find a little bit about competency so it says there that this supersedes uh, that one well that one's still in place this is the super session if you like it's not quite out yet but it's imminently going to be uh, sent out so we, I use the new document rather than the old one so if you go online you'll probably be able to find this all these all these documents that we're looking at uh, are all online <clears throat> so this is the the GIUSR is, is what it's uh, GIUSR and the GIUSP are the procedures for, for that. So they're, they're combined into two documents. So this is what it says. It's widely now accepted majority accidents in industry are generally in some measure attributable to human technical factors in the sense that actions by people in, uh, initiated or contributed to the accidents, people might have, have acted better to avert them. So this is coming out of this document. None of these slides have come from my own uh, they're all out of these published guidances. And then it says a little bit later on there, um, proper consideration. And uh, it's just recommended that you cognizant take place of so these two publications and uh, the HSG48 and the HSG65. So it's now moved us out of gas uh, into general health and safety. So this is the health and safety executive HSG48. Uh, this is what it's pointing us to. 
out of the gas regulation. So we're not in gas no more, we're just in general health and safety. It says this, people can cause, contribute uh, to accidents or mitigate the consequences in a number of ways. And then those four points there, I'm not gonna dwell on those too much, but uh, what I'm kind of getting at is that competency exists in some way, shape or form uh, for not only surveyors, but everybody who kind of carries out work, uh, whether they're being paid for it or not. Uh, and these documents are available for you to look at, because I do want to get onto the gas, which is, uh, you know, gas for boats. So there you go, active failures and latent failures, poor design of plant equipment, ineffective training, supervision, communications and uncertainties in roles and responsibilities. I think all surveyors fall into that kind of catch of ears. Uh, part of their sort of remit and then this one was interesting so this is a graph or a, a, a chart a flow chart so human failures are look like they're split into two errors two, two areas errors and violations and that's the first time I've seen this published anywhere so basically your errors are skill-based errors mistakes you know lapses of memory slips of action Paul was talking about getting distracted that kind of thing um, rule-based mistakes where you're maybe a coding surveyor and you, you miss the height of a handrail or something and, and knowledge-based mistakes and that could be competency couldn't it you know moving into areas that you don't know about or ex or one of the things we're talking about with gas is uh, ignoring areas that you maybe should know about if you're doing surveys on boats and, and maybe you s exclude them because you're not you don't feel competent or whatever and then there's a violation side not going to dwell on that. Everybody knows a surveyor that follows the path of the easiest route, I'm sure, or in the past has known, known that happen. And that could be like, you know, doing the videos, taking photos, changing reports, that kind of thing. That all follows into the violations. And I was, I was really sort of interested when I saw that. that it's the first time that I've ever come across it in a health and safety document, if you like. So breaking the rules violations it tells you what they are deliberate deviations from the rules and they're um, down at the bottom there routine violation and then there's there's five blue marks desire to cut corners save time perception that rules are too restrictive that could be uh, one there couldn't it for us surveyors belief that the rules no longer apply or apply to them or him or her lack of enforcement of the rules that's another one for surveyors, isn't it? Because we're out there on our own generally. And then new workers starting on the job where uh, old boy rule violations are the norm or factory route violations are the norm and they don't realise that they should be doing something slightly different way. So the key message is, again, this is all taken from the uh, health and safety document. Uh, I'll let you read that. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to dwell on it. Uh, we're just going to crack on. I'm going to zoom through the slides, no pun intended. Uh, this is the second document that, the, that was amended. And again, it's free to download and you can download it. There. Mike's got a copy of this presentation. So if you wanted to get the slides from Mike, then you could, you could ask him for that. And then again, it's looking at risk and uh, there's the the old discs with the what, what the health and safety think that you should be doing. And then if we look at those two there, competence and legal competence, whatever that is. And then competence, it gives you a bit of a statement. Truly effective health and safety management requires competency across every facet of an organization, of an organization through every level of the workforce. And again, that's from a, a document and that's the link there to it. So their competence is the ability to undertake responsibilities, perform activities to a recognised standard on a regular basis. And it combines practical and thinking skills, knowledge and experience. I think everybody uh, understands that. And this is what the health and safety regulations expect of you. It replies uh, an employer to appoint one or more competent people to help them implement the measures they need to take to comply with legal requirements. That could be a member of the workforce, an owner or manager or an external consultant. 
uh, and a competent person should focus on significant risks to those and serious consequences. Competence of individuals is vital, whether they are, this is a really important little box, competence of individuals is vital, whether they are employees, managers, supervisors, employees or contractors, especially those with safety critical roles. And it gives an example, such as a plant maintenance engineer, and I would open that bracket and uh, could you argue that surveyors fit into that safety critical role if you're surveying uh, you know, surveying boats which go out on the sea or out on inland waters, or whatever. I mean, obviously, I think that that would probably uh, come into play. And it ensures they recognise the risks in their activities and apply the right measures and control managers, control measures to manage those risks. So it's fairly, fairly, uh, fairly clear there where your competence should lie. So what to look for in competence? Again, this was very interesting. Um, Again, this is all out of that second document. Not in GASP, but in these two documents, as we've said before. Use the following examples, and he can read those five points. Sorry about my computer beeping. I couldn't turn it off for some reason. So there, what it looks like when it's done effectively, and then more importantly, this is what it looks like when it's not done, when it's done badly. So lack of awareness <clears throat> of key hazards and risks people at the skills, knowledge and experience through their job. And um, I'd probably go as far as to say that you're, you know, extend that into operating outside your areas of competence or the job has certain competences that you need of which some of those you have uh, maybe missing. And you've got to work on those and we do that with CPD, don't we? Health and safety advice and training are irrelevant, incompetent or wrong. And again, that's a mindset uh, for some people. Not so much nowadays, but in the old days when, dare I say, health and safety first came out, uh, some people were, um, you know, pushing back against it because of its, uh, you know, the cost of it and, and how it upset them and they'd been doing things for years, et cetera, et cetera. No standard set, people not held accountable. Again, there's, if you've got responsibility, like we have as surveyors and there's no accountability, then that is just as bad and being a part of the IAMS and one or two other things helps helps us with that. And incident action taken to comply with the law. Uh, so really you've got to know a little bit about that as well. Uh, knee jerk reactions following incidents and near misses. And this is a classic of people who don't understand health and safety. Uh, everybody gets messed around. And then the organizing doesn't know what it needs to do to move forward. And that probably extends to most people because um, it's not always clear what you need to do. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so that was competence. So let me just go back to that one. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna just talk a little bit about sort of competency in gas because um, one of the things that uh, obviously you've got to decide for yourself because uh, competency is, is, is something that only you know about and only you can kind of organize for yourself. I can't say you're competent. You can't say I'm competent. It's something that is, uh, you know, done by experience, training, you know, workplace experience, that kind of thing. So when we move on to this next one, we're talking about the scenario here is you've turned up to a, whatever kind of survey you do, whether that's a coding survey, uh, whether that's a, um, it could be a purchase survey, couldn't it? It could be an insurance survey. Those are the three main ones. Or it could be some guy saying, you know, come and have a look at my boat. I just want it surveying because I want to know, you know, what faults are there. So <clears throat> one of the things that I'm curious about, and maybe we could use our chat, box, chat boxes and Mike, you could um, let me know what, what's going on. If you saw that on a boat before we move on now, uh, what would you what would you say? Would you just say sort of like get a gas safe guy to come and check it? And that what line in your kind of LPG on your boat survey uh, would you do? I'm just going to leave that up for a few minutes now. Um, we're going to try and find some faults as well. So we could start writing a few of those down as well. But what would you say? So write in the chat box what you'd say on your report, you, you know, LPG. Would you would you make comments or would you just go for the the you know, get a gas safe guy to check it out. It's not part of the survey. Uh, Mikhail here, James says, oh, 
Hi, James. Uh, Hi, Mikhail, Mikhail just said, first check if there is a drain on the bottom. Yeah, we're going to go into the specific details later, but I'm just interested in, at the moment, what you would actually put on your report. So would, would, what would you write on your report for LPG on boats? Um, do you write, not part of the survey, is this a, get a gas safe guide to check it? Or, or would you go further than that and then include some faults within your... Uh, and, and we are going to move on to the to the question in a, in a little minute and we're going to talk about gas lockers and what we should have drains on this. I've had someone say list faults. Okay, cool. Anybody else there? Oh, I don't see any ventilation, corroded pipes, etc. Therefore, I would probably let a specialist deal with it. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, so... Here's another one. <laughs> Something yeah. like, this surveyor is not qualified to declare an LPG system as safe to operate or, or issue any certification. Yeah. To that end, the following should be regarded as general ad hoc observations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah another good. comment says, list faults and recommend specialist attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I've, I've followed a few. Keep, keep the faults coming, guys. Just let's, and you can keep reading them out, please, if you, if you can. Yep. I can't see the comments box, unfortunately. No problem, uh, mm -hmm. so, no further so far. So, I mean, the thing, the thing I'm, we're getting at here is, is um, some surveyors just write, and I've followed a few surveyors um, or, or, you know, old, old surveys on boats that say, you know, get a gas safe guy to come and have a look at it. That's the recommendation. Um, and, and what I'm uh, alluding to here is that, you know, if, if you're doing 150 boats or have done 150 boats and 90% of them or 70% of them have got gas or LPG systems, then if something happened on that LPG system, where legally would you lie if you've just wrote, get a gas safe guy when there are glaring faults? That's uh, another one, James said, bottles are not secured. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep the faults coming then now. Um, I'm going to put up a, another slide. That's a close-up of the orange, orange hose. That's a close-up of... Does anybody know what that thing is with a red top anybody know uh, what that is? we have missing gauge per abyca1 tanks secure dissimilar metal piping no bonding flex hose surveyor yeah. certified yeah. um filler cap at the bottom is a bit yeah wrong. yeah 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 crazed pipe needs replacing uh, and hose perished yeah oh refer to faults where it does not comply with regs separately vented locker Hoses in bad condition, leaks from bubble, leak detector. Okay, so let me just comment on that one. So yep. regulations, who, who wrote that one? Regs? Uh, oh, gosh, it's moving not too fast. Regulations, um, Jackson. Okay. Um, so what regs are you talking about? Okay. Uh, then we've had hoses out of date and hose perished and bubble gauge looks poor. Locker not constructed from flame retardant material, uh, copper tube de zinced. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, sorry, zincified. Yeah, concern that any leaking gas would probably spread throughout the bilge and maybe living accommodation. It's not actually the bilge, but we'll show this photo later. Let's now I'm going to move to this one. So that's where it is, it's, it's on the back of a, a, a traditional. Uh, wooden sailing uh, fishing vessel that's been converted. It's got two masts, so it's uh, uh, a catch rig of some description, and that's where the gas locker is. And you can see there's a, a by the orange glove there. There's a bit of a regulator just sort of kind of lying around. Uh, had another one, James. Recommendation: remove bottles from boat and do not use before system is serviced and checked yeah, yeah, by yeah. a competent engineer slash tester. Absolutely perfect. Yep. And obviously that's the gas locker on the back of the deck um, above the engine room and the steering flat as it was. 
So there's no 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 labeling on that either. So that's that's what I was faced with when I got there. So these are the uh, the main pictures then. So we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to find some faults now. So first thing is is obviously there has to be a gas locker of some description. Uh, this is an on deck gas locker, and if you look at the right hand bottle, there's a slither of wood underneath there, and just to the uh, bottom right hand corner, you can see there's a gap in the uh, in the fabrication there, the deck fabrication, the bench seat. So it is kind of um, on deck, and that would run, you know, the gas would run away from the boat except for it might go down that, uh, that water cap. Incidentally, the deck was leaking, uh, so gas could get through into the, into the engine room as well. So. Um, reply from um, Jackson yep. concerning the regulations. Yes, what regulations are there? Yeah, well, that's the thing. You've got to be careful as a surveyor quoting this as to current regs or this is not to current regs or that kind of thing, because um, firstly, it's it's really difficult even for me as as one of the better well-read guys on gas lpg boats to actually keep up with the regulations and which regulations apply because let's say that was installed on a boat in 1980 and it's not been changed since then it it, it complies to that regulation at that time which might be different to the current regulations uh, so you've got to be really careful especially when it's, it's kind of okay, like a moody or something like that, where you've got the little gas locker that on the side deck there and everything's okay and it's not been changed, then it might conform to the regs that it was built to in those days. And that, that might still be okay, providing there's been no alterations. So it's a bit of a minefield, really. Um, so perhaps, you know, stating sort of regulations, certainly if, if something went wrong and, and, and the, the, the lawyers got involved, they'd immediately want to know where your competence lied and which, which regulations uh, you, were, you were applying. So um, it's, a, it's a really good point. Um, I, I, know, I know it was only a, 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 I'm not picking on Mr. Jackson there, but, um, and obviously, a, a, you know, current regulations, this and the other is, is important, but maybe not for your report. Uh, Halleck has said ISO 10239. Yeah, ISO 10239. That's a good regulation. Um, unfortunately, it has its own problems. Uh, ISO 10239 is the, um, the ISO that, that, that uh, is recommended by MCA and also uh, the Recreational Craft Directive, and it covers LPG systems uh, for new installations unfortunately it doesn't cover existing installations and it also doesn't inc include uh, testing with any gas uh, it's only testing with air up to two and a half times the working pressure of the vessel whatever that is so ISO 10239 has to be supplemented with another regulation and that regulation does anybody know what that one is so it's, it's our local UK regulation it starts PD. Does anybody know what that, that one is? No comments at the moment, James. And also there's the regulators one as well. So there's kind of three regulations. So ISO 10239. And then there's the UK one, which is PD 54823. Uh, I've had 5482-3. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Well, it's not dash anymore. It, it used to be dash when it was an, uh, a British standard. A British standard 5482 part three. Um, and then there was three dates, 1980, 1986, 1992. And then that was superseded by the PD 54823. Um, so 54823 concerns commissioning and also uh, exist in situations. So 10239 can be used on a new boat. Let's say you bought a boat from France, then 10239 would be applicable on the Recreational Craft Directive. You'd see that on the uh, Declaration of Conformity. It would say the gas was installed to ISO 10239. And then you would expect to find, like previously mentioned before, a little gauge and then pipe work down to 
and including maybe an appliance. Uh, generally, they leave the bottles and the regulators to the local uh, regulations. So if that came to UK, then 54823 would, 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 would apply there. And then the regulators one is ISO 10129, um, <clears throat> which governs what we can do with, with regulators. Um, so they're the, they're the three regulations. So 10239, you've got to be careful because I know this is a, a problem with coding. They ask you to say that the boat is, or well, the MCA say, you know, is, is it all to 10239? Uh, and generally, the answer would be no in every case because 54823 needs to be in play as well. So that's where the commissioning and testing, gas soundness testing comes from. Does anybody know what that, that item between the hose and the copper pipe is? Anybody has it a guess at what that is? Anybody know? Regulator, bubble no. detector. Bubble tester, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so that's a bubble tester. Now, it's not clear on there. It's clear. It's more clear on the, the top left photograph. There's a, a, a plastic file in there with a line on it, you can just see. And, and that is filled with uh, an ethanol solution. Uh, all day provide little silver packets that you put in there. And um, that unscrews, you put the fluid in there and tighten it up to a line. So it should have um, fluid in it to a line level. You can have a look at that. It should be secured and that one isn't. The two little screws there into the wood, the wood's rotten and so it's rattling around. Not sure what the coil is. It's supposedly some sort of anti-vibration thing, but you shouldn't have that because it should be um, should be tied within 150 millimeters of the, of the union. Uh, and then horizontally 500 clips to keep it supported. So the bubble, the bubble tester itself um, is, is an owner's way of sort of checking whether there's um, a leak. Uh, some people like them, some people don't. I think it's probably a good idea. Um, but there are some things that surveyors need to know. Um, and if you look down at the bottom left-hand photograph, you can just see where the orange hose comes on and there's a clip. There's a little arrow on the lower input and there's a little arrow on the higher output on the silver casing. Some of the newer ones are blue. Uh, there's, there is a little difference between the two, but we'll not, we'll not go there just now. So the arrow, you, if you connect them in the wrong way around, because it's easier. So if that was on the other side of the bulkhead, it, it, it would be naturally easier to connect the hose to the other side, the higher one, and the, the arrows would be the wrong way around. And what that happens is it just blows the fluid straight into the, into the system. So it has to be in the right way around. Okay, does, does anybody know how to use a bubble tester? Just type yes or no. Not, not saying that you should do it on a, on a survey. Again, visual. Two no's, two yeses. Say again? Two, oh, three yeses, two no's. Yeah, cool. Okay, so the most important thing then, quickly running through what we do with bubble testers. Um, we're not allowed to use them as gas safe for doing soundness tests, but you can... You could give a, the owner can use it himself. We have to use obviously manometer gauges and that kind of thing. The boat safety scheme allows its examiners to, to use these things, which is fine. Uh, they work into that competency. And, and I know that the, the boat safety scheme guys have all just been through the LPG system again, which I was a part of. So the first thing is with a, with a, with a bubble tester is the gas has to be on. I've um, had a comment, James, sorry. No protection for the pipe work or bubble tester from bottle changing impacts, electrical yeah. cables passing through the area yeah, yeah, yeah. with no bulkhead protection. Correct, yeah. Electrical cables in a gas locker. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that's uh, a requirement of 10239 or 524823. Um, so bubble testers, yeah. So what, you, what you're supposed to do is, is visually check the, the bubble tester itself check that there's fluid in the, um, in the file there up to the line and to the level. And then you need to light a burner. And the reason you light a burner is because you're testing the bubble tester to start with. So the gas has to be on. 
um, visual inspection of all the pipe work, make sure there's no open ends anywhere. And then light a burner or get the owner to light a burner. And then you press the bubble tester and you hold it down. And then you can see bubbles emitting through the bubble tester through the fluid. And those are, those are bubbles, uh, gas bubbles, LPG gas bubbles coming out of the bottle. You then release the uh, oh. red knob and turn off the gas burner. And then you repress the button. And then this time you're looking for any kind of bubble. So you hold it down for however long it says in the instructions for the bubble tester and they, they do vary from eight minutes to 60 seconds. And then you just observe whether there are any bubbles. And if there's any bubbles at all, it means there's a leak. On the newer ones, on the newer bubble testers, um, you're, there's some theory that you're allowed three or four bubbles. Um, and then, because it's a much more accurate machine, but basically any bubbles that, that flow means there's a bit of a leak. So that's how you use the bubble tester. So you don't just go kind of like pressing it and having a look. There are obviously checks to do before that. Again, this is outside the scope of really surveying. You, you would normally want to just do a visual check on, on those th items. So the main thing is when you come to a boat, like anything else, check the whole system. Try and find out whether there's a gas locker. I mean, I didn't even know there was a gas on this boat. I went down inside, there was a cooker there. So obviously I knew there was some sort of gas somewhere. So I went and had a quick look round, moved all that equipment, the bucket and everything and found that. So there's gas locker. The gas locker has to be somewhere connected to outside so that the gas, if it builds up in there, can escape. And on the Moody or something like, you know, GRP boats where they're sunk into the deck, then obviously that pipe has to be uh, gas proof. It can't be that white hose that gets affected by gas. It has to be ISO 7840 or a gas proof hose. And that orange hose doesn't go big enough, so, or, or glass fiber or something like that. So there has to be uh, no way the gas can get inside the boat. The second thing is mentioned before, the bottles need to be secure. And that clearly is not the case there. And then the third thing is that it has to have some sort of regulator that's in reasonable visual condition. I, I would stay away again from dates and things because it's a minefield. But essentially it has to have, um, have to, has to be in good condition. It's worth mentioning that pretty much any regulator is okay for one single appliance, but these these now these wide beams that are coming out have got like full full suites of kitchens that can can be using huge amounts of kilowatts, and the amount of capacity of the bottles supplying the regulator must be okay for that as well, and that's in one or two three nine. So I don't know how a surveyor would work that out because it, again it's quite complex, but if you see sort of like one little bottle and a massive equipment, uh, it's likely that that'll be under under supplying the gas to the appliances. Again, that orange hose, Jubilee clips are okay, but a gas guy can't put them on. But if you see them, they're fine. It has to be on a barb. It can't just be on a piece of pipe, a piece of flat parallel pipe. Um, it has to be on a barb or, or a, at least a flare on the pipe, uh, which is sometimes hard to see. if It's just a, a, a pipe fitting. And then the hose itself, yeah, split, cracked. The date actually is irrelevant. I know some people put five and 10 year life on them. It has to just be in good conditioning if you're looking 10239, 54823. But happy if you want to put it's out of date. It's not strictly true, but five or 10 years, I don't think you'd get, get in trouble for that. If you got sued for a length of 50, 50 pence hose, I think you'd be okay. And then the bubble test has to be secured. Um, it has to have the fluid in it and also sometimes it can be um, fairly black. Does anybody know what the black is that stains the inside of the bubble tester and also, also gets inside the pipework? Does anybody know what the black staining is? I haven't got any answers at the moment. Oh, no, someone says no. Okay, okay. There's a stenching agent in these 
these bottles, LPG and also uh, the two types of LPG. Um, if it was an orange bottle, what would that be? What gas would be inside it? Does anybody know what orange bottles contain? Does anybody know what blue bottles contain? Because liquid petroleum gas in its natural state doesn't smell. It's orange butane, orange propane. Uh, yeah, butane in the blue bottles and orange bottles contain propane. Yeah, yeah that's fine. And obviously the regulation is different, the pressures are different. Um, so the black staining is, is the stenching agent that they put in the bottle. Sometimes if you feel a bottle and you, f you think it's, it's empty and it's run out, but there's, it feels like there's something in the bottom, they're called heavy ends. And they're, they're the stenching agent and, and crud, essentially. And that sometimes can work its way into the, into the boat. And, and sometimes if you open up a union or, or the cooker smells the gas really, really badly, it's because stenching agents worked its way down into the into that somewhere and you, you, you can't get rid of the smell, but it's, it smells like there's gas, but it's actually not, it's the stension agent. So there's a little bit of a, a no, anomaly there. So the, the, the stension agent really shouldn't be cleaning, shouldn't be um, in, that, in that case, a little bit black. So that should be cleaned out. So again, that, that could be commented on. Um, does anybody know the difference between butane and, butane and propane? Reference to boats? what the difference is, what the main difference for a surveyor would be. I've just had a question, James. Can tension agent damage plastic pipes? Uh, plastic pipes on a gas installation. There shouldn't be any plastic pipes in gas installations. Stension agent really is, um, when, when you've got stension agent in the pipes, Generally, when you light the burner, you get like a, a, a flickering effect. It's different to regulate and not working. It's different to, so if, if you lit all the burners and they were all a bit over, over, all over the place, but looked nice and blue and clean and the rest of it, then that could be an indication that the stenching agent, and it's, just, okay. it's just basically soup, horrible soup stuff. It's, it's really um, bad. I've had another comment saying boiling point. Yeah, 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 okay. <clears throat> Oh, it passes BSS question mark. And then another comment saying freezing point. Yeah, yeah. And further, last one I have here, where do you see the blackness from the stenching agent? Uh, in the glass bowl or the plastic bowl of the bubble test drifter as well. If there isn't one, you can't see it. It's a really bit of a, it's a bit of a nightmare when it gets into a, a pipe because you can have a fault one day and not a fault the next day as it glugs about so if you look at the black the blackness of the bubble tester just below the two screws there's a glass file or a, a perspex file that's full of or generally got a, up to a line with uh, ethanol and you can see that one's really black so that's <coughs> an agent's got in there somehow so yeah i mean the, the main thing is if, if you've got a, a liverboard let's say, and they're running on butane, then, then butane only works down to a pressure of about uh, five degrees centigrade. Uh, so if you've got somebody living on a boat that's maybe in Scotland and they're running on butane, then it might be worth mentioning that sort of, you know, in the winter, they might not get quite the gas out of the appliances that they're, and, and obviously that could cause CO. And, and propane works down to minus 20 degrees. So, I've had a comment saying I understood the orange flexi pipes degraded from the inside, which you will not see from a visual inspection. Yeah, it, it, it's a regulation thing. You've got to just be careful if you go around saying that um, the day is out of date. You know, the, the comment was it's out of date. There's no such thing as out of date in terms of the regulation, but it might be out of date in terms of your own five years or 10 years, you could say that the, the, the hose is older than five years on a marine environment or older than 10 years in a, in a maybe a, an inland waterways in, environment. And therefore you think it should be changed, but, but there's no requirement to change the, the hose for age in, in the regulations, but it's a good point. And, and I would always put 
the date on the hose is 2007 and it's therefore aged, so it, it, it should be changed. But clearly that one's got issues. Clearly that, that hose there has got issues. They should also be, be uh, shorter than a meter. Uh, uh, and that's on either end. So sometimes you go to these gas lockers and there's a hose and it's two and a half meters long. Again, the regulation states that they should not be longer than a meter. And that's sim similar on the cooking appliances. In Germany, they have a 400 mil uh, limit on the inside. So if you see the GOC, GOC hoses, and the, the, I think the French have a, a limit inside as well, 400 mil. Um, I've had a question. Do you find that bubble testers are quite often the source of, of potential leaks? Uh, again, it's moving outside of vi the, the visual inspection, unless you can smell it. I mean, if you can smell gas, you can, you can write on your report, I, can, I could smell gas. And therefore you could write on that, you know, that, that, that chap before said, you know, don't use it until uh, you get it quali quantified. And, and I think moving on to the kind of survey, uh, you know, everybody's found faults there. I mean, that's a, that's a striking, um, striking faults on, on that. And, and that's not unusual. I mean, I see lots of gas that are similar to that. This, this one luckily had all the faults just before I did the lecture. So, <laughs> quite lucky there. Um, I've had a comment saying when caravans are serviced, they want to change any hose over five years. Yeah, again, don't get hooked up into the caravan regulations because they're different, completely different. The regulators are different. The, uh, you know, caravan has holes in the bottom of it under the appliances and things like that. So, you know, we don't want to get into caravan regulations. The, the boat regulations are the ones that we want to stick to. And, um, and that that just doesn't have a requirement at the moment. I mean, these things are always changing, but you you wouldn't be wrong in putting that the 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 age of the hose in the case two thousand and seven, and it's now two thousand and twenty twenty one. You know, therefore the, the hose should be recommended change. You wouldn't have a problem with that. <coughs> you just might have a problem if somebody's bought a brand new piece of two thousand sixteen hose and he's just fitted it on. Um, he might want you not to be telling him to change it, but you could you could do. I mean, it's not it's not a problem. I don't I don't think anybody's gonna <coughs> sorry get get in trouble for saying that too much. It's just a you know <coughs> comments should be right really, shouldn't they? So yeah, <coughs> fair few faults there. Everybody seems to be picking up on those clipping of pipes. The pipes deteriorated. The bottles aren't secure. The deck looks to be leaking, it's a, a, a water, uh, <clears throat> that cap doesn't actually fit properly as well, so you could end up with LPG if it leaks into your, into your water system. <clears throat> the other thing you've got to do is find, really, find where the pipe goes through and then follow it to the, to the appliance if you can. <clears throat> and that way you've checked the whole of the pipe through the length of the whole of the boat. <clears throat> One of the things on inland waterways I used to find was that these uh, dom domestic or domestic L LPG fridges, when you come across those. Um, <clears throat> I've had a comment. Oh. Sorry, James. Go on. That's fine. Um, so I've had a comment saying some French built boats used to have the entire gas line in hose. I think it complied with French regulations at the time. <coughs> this meant that the entire hose could be replaced at intervals and got around the problem of corroded copper pipes running through inaccessible areas. Um, another comment, I note the date on the hose in report. Sometimes the same hose is, on, is then on the next five year survey. Um, and I've had another one. Why don't shipyards fit a safety solenoid on the gas supply so that it always so that is always switched off unless in use? Yeah, good comments again. <clears throat> all great stuff. All all those systems are allowed in America. Um, so American boats come and they glass them into the structure of the boat. So it's an absolute nightmare. It's it doesn't comply to one or two three nine. Um, and <clears throat> all those systems really, if you do get them, <coughs> you should be mentioning that on your report mm -hmm. that the system has an all, all, all hose system and it should be checked by a, a, a gas safe guy because there are, there are real problems with those. 
when they're built into behind the furniture. It's bad enough having a, a, a copper pipe that's, <clears throat> that's, that's in behind. And also one of the other things is um, you're not allowed any soft soldered joints. They have to be compression. Or brazed. So soft soldered joints are not allowed <coughs> on boat systems. Any more questions? None at the moment are coming through. <clears throat> okay, so back to the fridge. These fridges break down are a bit of a nightmare, so the guy took it out. <clears throat> and he then just shoved a piece of rubber up the hose. So I went in there and there's one appliance, had a quick look around, all that kind of thing. <clears throat> Noticed there was a little curtain or a little couple of doors. Had a look at where the fridge used to be and then found this copper pipe poking out with a, a plastic fitting on the end. So you really do have to sort of like follow the gas pipe best you can. Where it disappears, make a note, can't see it between X and X, pokes out again, again here. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. And that would be, um, again, really reducing your liability um, with anybody coming back between... Obviously, you, you don't know whether this guy's going to get a gas safe guy out or not, or somebody competent. So uh, the guy who said, turn it off, don't use it. That's a, a, a good thing to, to write if you find quite a lot of comments. Uh, I don't think anybody would be too upset with that. Um, and if he, do, if he chooses not to do that, then that's his, his, his or her problem. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Again, there used to be... Um, a thickness problem with pipes. Pipes used to come with this insulation on them, you know, the B&Q wicks kind of stuff. That used to not be allowed, but it is allowed now. They reduced the wall thickness of the pipe a couple of years ago to 0.7 up to 13 mil. And they were, they were um, 0.6 or something. So that's all, that's all okay now. But again, the white, um, you know, copper pipe in with a, with a, with a sheathing on it. You've got to be careful uh, with that and if and if it's got any sort of cracking or any it looks you know not clipped properly or something like that you could also probably mention that so yeah I mean <clears throat> pretty good comments there everybody seems to know a little bit about gas hopefully you know a little bit more about it now uh, certainly the bubble testers you've got to make sure the arrows are in the right way it's got a bit of a fluid in it and it's not too black in the uh, you know, maybe have a look at for that extension agent next time you have a look at these things. Pipe work has to be clipped properly, has to have some form of gas locker. You need some form of labeling gas isolator here. So if you go back to that, um, you know, where the glove and the regulator is and the bucket was on top of that, I had no idea that the gas was in there. Um, so you, you've got to have a gas isolator here. In incidentally, if, if there's only one appliance, then the bottle isolator can be classed as the isolator for the appliance. As soon as there becomes one or more, more than one appliance, then individual appliances should really have their own isolation. Um, and then the last thing is, yes or no again on the comments boxes, does anybody ever look at the ventilation requirements for the vessel and the gas appliances? Whilst we're waiting, James, it's Mike here back again now, Cam, Cam's popped off. Um, so whilst people are coming in with some answers there, yeah, uh, Barney says there are incompetent, oh, is it uh, mine? It's just gone up. There are incompetent gas safe engineers yeah, yeah. issuing certificates to boats that are clearly yeah. unsafe Absolutely. on the south coast. Is this a surprise to you? No, no, not at all. There's, <coughs> there aren't many gas, gas engineers up here in, on the west coast of Scotland. And um, I'm revered up here now when I, I go on and, and you know somebody's got a gas safe certificate and I have a look at it and then have a look at the boat I make comment and they say yeah but it's got a certificate and I say well you know we'll go and have a look at 10239 and you can see the clearly the faults are there similar to what Paul Homer was saying you know earlier and what Fraser Noble was saying in, in, in the you know the, the certifying day mm -hmm. you know people say that they've got certificates for this that and the other so the boat has to have fire extinguishers. If it's got a cooker, it has to have a fire blanket. Um, and the ventilation requirements, again, does, it, does anybody ever think about what the ventilation requirements are for boats? 
sailing uh, boat in particular. Lots of yeses coming in. One yeah, night. yeah, cool. Okay, so the, there has to be certain ventilation requirements. You can work it out. Again, it's in 10239. It's also in the boat safety scheme. Um, I think it might be on the boat safety scheme website, how you actually work that out. But essentially on a sailing boat, if you can lock the ventilation down, it needs signage to say that it needs to be open before using the cooker. And then there needs to be a bit of signage on the cooker saying open vent before using the cooker. Uh, John, ha John has a question for you, James. Yep. Uh, if you see a drain hose from a gas locker in regular PVC hose, that's not okay, question mark. It's, it's not okay, no, to the regulation. What, what, what that plastic hose is, um, that basically LPG uh, permeates through anything like silicon. It permeates through um, the, the, the nylon type hoses. The only type of hose that it is okay for LPG. Again, natural rubber is no use. Uh, it has to be sort of nitride, I think it is, uh, rubber. So ISO 10239 and exhaust hose complies. So there, there, there could be a recommendation. And um, also if it's part of the boat, again, fiberglass, if it's a fiberglass thing in there, uh, you could always chuck a little bit of water in there to see if it, uh, the drain works properly or if it's blocked. Or you could add, you could put on your on your survey that that, that that should be tested, and obviously it has to <clears throat> keep the, the gas from outside of the inside of the boat. So um, those plastic hoses that you see with the with the wire down them, they're a classic because they're readily available. Um, if you see one on that's been on a boat for a long time and gas has been going down there, they they become very hard and very uh, pliable. So sorry, hard and, and and brittle. So really, the the regulation states that it should be. A, a, ga a gas approved type hose uh, unfortunately it doesn't uh, state which types there are but from experience exhaust type hose and also ISO 7840 you know the, the fuel type hose they are compliant as well so yeah you could mention that and obviously <clears throat> that hose has to sort of like fall uh, away quite a lot at the time it's annoying in a, in a lazarette that the you know, the opening to the gas locker goes outside the boat. They want it to be longer so that they can get the kit in there. Again, it can't go up or down or have a sump in it because uh, that can fill with water and obviously block that. So that's something else to look for. Can't be any traps in there. Has to fall, fall out. Uh, Tim says drain has to come out above waterline, which might be different when underway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And also a sailing boat, you know, when you're heeled over, but uh, I think, again, you, you're moving into the advanced section here where, you know, perhaps uh, you could mention that, you know, on a sailing boat, the gas would be underwater. Um, for sure. If it, if it is leaking, then you'll get a wet lazarette in any case. And, and you know, that narrow boats are the same, aren't they? You know, you load up the narrow boat, fill, fill the water, fresh full of water and before you know it the gas gas holes on the locker are under the water so yeah something to look for there james uh, you you filled an hour brilliantly okay uh, cool thank you. uh any final points for james any final questions uh w the only the only thing i i'm going to say is i mean if anybody wants to open up the mics and have a chat that's fine <clears throat> we're going to try and do a, a bit more of a formal sort of gas thing looking at the properties of gas and uh, lpg for boats hopefully uh, next year or certainly the year after. Um, but comment, comment coming in saying that was really helpful James so thank you and I agree I mean gas is an area that I, I think often does confuse people and uh, I, th I think the main the main thing is if you see something that's that, that's striking mention it in your report I mean I, I don't do um, gas surveys when I when I'm commissioned to do a, a pre-purchase survey or a, a, an insurance survey I don't do a gas type sort of survey. That, that's a separate contract. If they want me to do, uh, you know, a, a landlord's report or a, or a report on a boat through the gas safe qualifications that I've got, I just do a visual inspection. I never do a soundness test, never, you know, so I just follow the rules like, you know, the, a surveyor would. And then if there's anything strikingly obvious, then, you know, if, if there's nothing strikingly obvious, I just, write down you know that should be certain you know checked by a gas safe engineer periodically or, or within 12 months or something like that 
and and if I find any striking faults, then I put them down as well and just put this is not a you know like that chap said before, this is not a full and comprehensive survey of the gas, but these observations are made, therefore it should be checked. And sometimes I write, in, in this case I wrote, um, the gas the, the gas bottle should be removed from the vessel until such time as the vas the, the gas uh, has been checked by a competent person, and and the guy took the bottles off. Final question, and then I think we need to move on, please, James. Yep. Uh, from yep. another James, uh, James Randy Wren. What manner, uh, if any, multi-gas detector do you suggest? Uh, yeah, again, I mean, I think you're going a bit too far. Visual survey only. You know, should you be wearing a, a personal detector for gas and void spaces when you go on boats as well? I mean, that, I think that that's moving to the next stage, really. At this, you know, this this one's just about visual faults on boats. But yeah, good point. But I, I wouldn't recommend, I, I, you know, I, I don't carry one. I just use the gas safe way of it, visual inspection. James, thank you very much indeed. No problem. Uh, been a fabulous session, I much appreciate it.